Hey everyone, in this video, we will understand what exactly is this transfer learning. Now, when we talk about this transfer learning, transfer learning is nothing but a reuse of the already trained model on a new problem set. Now, this is very popular in case of deep learning because it will help us to train the deep learning neural network with comparatively little data. And not just that, it will help us in speeding up the training process and increasing the overall accuracy. Now, in this video, you're going to learn in depth about this transfer learning and every concept that is surrounding this transfer learning. My name is Nachiket Murthy, and I'll be with you in this video journey. So if you have got any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments or reach me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to help you. So let's get started, folks. So this concept of transfer learning is very useful in data science field because when we take up any problem set, not every problem set will have like I would I would say connected. So not every problem in the real world data will not have the millions of data. That means I will not have the data available with me on each and every use case. But I would require the model which performs best on most of the data. So that is where the transfer learning comes in help to us. So when we talk about this transfer learning, okay, what we will do is we will train the deep learning model. Let's say I've got the deep learning model and I have trained it on task A. Now this task A is nothing but it could be as simple as identifying whether my given image contains a cat or whether this given image belongs to the dog or not. So it could be a simple classifier where I want to identify whether it belongs to the cat class or whether it belongs to the dog class. So let's assume that this is a model that I have trained to perform the simple classifier. I'll call it as model A. Now I can use the knowledge which I have learned from this task A to identify whether it belongs to cat or dog. I can use this same model A, the knowledge that I have learned from this model A into a new task. Let's say I've got task B where I want to identify whether a given image contains bus or a car. Okay, I want to identify whether a given image contains the bus or a car. So I hope you are getting the point. See, I'm going to use the model A, which I have used it to train it on a task A for a simple classifier to classify for a given input data, whether it contains cat or dog, to usage of same model, that is the knowledge from the model A to perform on a new task to classify whether the given image belongs to truck or a car. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to exploit the knowledge that I had learned on one task and use that knowledge onto the new task. So the general idea you should use the knowledge of a model that has been learned on a task with a lot of available label training data into a new task, which does not have much data instead of starting the entire learning process from scratch. So what we do is instead of learning everything from scratch, we start with the patterns which has been learned from solving a related task. Now, this is very similar to the company's requirement, which you might have come across. Now, let me just give you an example. Let's say if I've got a company, okay, if I've got a company A, and if this company A is hiring for software engineers, Okay, if they're looking for a fresher position, they will be preferring for someone who is a graduate in computer science field, computer engineering field. Now, if you think closely, the reason that the company prefers for a computer engineer for the software engineering field, because here, let's say that they are hiring for the software engineering in a domain called .NET. Even though the person might not be from the .NET domain, at least the person who has done the graduation in the computer engineering field 
their intention or the company's intention is okay at least he'll be having some knowledge about java or c programming which will be as a starting point instead of starting everything from scratch so the idea of those of those companies is if i hire a graduate in a computer engineering field he will have some knowledge from his graduation which are related to the software engineering which we can exploit him so that we can train him on a new technology instead of training someone from scratch so that is the overall an example real world example of transfer learning so the idea is use the model which has been trained on a task a to exploit that learning on a new task now in case of computer vision what happens is the computer vision is nothing but a task where we are trying to identify what is present in a digital data so what happens is the neural network usually learns to identify the edges in the earlier layers and shapes in the middle layer and task specific features in the later layers now when we talk about this transfer learning the early and the middle layers are generally used for the transfer learning purpose okay so in case of transfer learning the early and the middle layers are generally what we use it to use it on the new data and we'll retrain on the final layers so by doing like this this will help us to leverage the label data of the task which it was initially trained on so whenever we talk about any deep learning model we basically have two things okay we basically have two things one is called as a body and the other one that we have it as a head okay the other one which we call it as a head so let's say i've got my model a so i'll mention i'll call this as a model a so this on the left hand side i now have a model a so this is the model a that i have actually trained to classify the cat or a dog so in my model i'll have a body and a head my body assuming that i'm making use of vgg16 model so in if i consider the vgg16 model i'll have the various individual layers so i'll have the convolution layers pooling convolution layers pooling at the end we'll have a dense and the output so in the output layer in this scenario i have got 1000 neurons okay and this is how the overall structure of my data would look like so overall structure of this architecture would look like so when i have this kind of an architecture so in my classification head as you can clearly see in this example i have got 1000 classes okay i have got 1000 classes on my head i have got 1000 neurons which we call it as a classification head and in case of body i have actually got my cnn layers and the dense layer so this is what we have when we consider any model architecture now assuming that i am making use of the model a okay which belongs to the vg16 so i have got the cnn and dense layer as a body and and the head i'll have a 1000 neuron okay since we are talking about the binary classifier maybe i'll have only one neuron okay i'll have one neuron which is my classification head now this i'll call it as head a and this is my body a now what i'll do is in case of transfer learning i'll just go ahead and use the same model okay i'll use the same model i'll use the body a okay which is nothing but the model a and i'm going to create a new more like a uh, new head that is for classification head which is for my head b the reason because in this scenario i'm training on the new task okay i'm training on the new task that is determining whether the input image is bus or a car so you can observe that i'm using the body a see i'm using the body a on the body a i'm adding a new head b so as a result of this the earlier layers that i have got from my previous task i'm using those layers those learned parameters and this will help me to perform this kind of classification in a better way now this is the core intuition of transfer learning okay so in this scenario 
we are making use of the transfer learning so that we can overall increase the accuracy and reduce the training time for the new task. So this is called as the transfer learning technique in case of deep learning. Now, if you want to learn more about its practical implementation, I highly recommend you to check out the class 29 of the deep learning course that has been created right now. So you can access the complete playlist as well in the YouTube channel of Manifold AI Learning. So this class 29 specifically talks about the VGG 16 model and how the architecture is. And in the class 30, it is implemented in a hands-on way. So I highly recommend you to check out the video so that you can learn in depth about its implementation as well as its working. So the key takeaway from this video is in case of transfer learning, I'll make use of the learning from one task and implement it on the other task. Okay, this is called as the transfer learning approach. Now, when we are implementing this transfer learning approach, so we can make use of the transfer learning approach uh, for three different ways. So one way that I can say is I can make use of this transfer learning approach to maybe to like I'll train the model to reuse it at a later point. Okay, this is one way of transfer learning. Sometimes we'll be using it. So in some scenarios, we will use a pre-trained model. Okay, so this is another use case. The other use case of transfer learning is feature extraction. So here in case of training the model to reuse it. So this is an approach where I want to solve the task one, but I do not have enough data with me. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll train my deep learning neural network. Okay. And then once I get the new data, maybe on top of the existing data, I'll do the retraining. Okay. So that's the scenario of training the model to reuse it. And when we talk about using a pre-trained model, so here I'll make use of the already pre-trained model. Okay. There are many pre-trained models that are released by various libraries that we have got. We can make use of those libraries and use those already available pre-trained model and then modify the layers as per our requirement and implement it for the task. And in case of the feature extraction, we will make use of the model Okay, and sending the new data, whatever the features that we would get, those new features will be generated and will be used as the input for the further processing. Okay, so these are the three important ways in which that we generally perform the transfer learning. So team, with this, we come to the end of this video and thanks again for watching. So if you are new, so please consider subscribing and I look forward to seeing you next time.